Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Justice for All Now. I'm your host, Hannah Zuberi. Thank you for watching us on Muslim Network TV, America's only Muslim focused television network. You can always watch us on Samsung, Galaxy 19, Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV. The Postal Service has received significant media attention in the past few weeks because the, of the president's work to dismantle its services and suppress its work in fear of losing the coming elections. Absentee ballots, early voting, and voting by mail are all processes of voting that are expected to be used in the coming elections because of the safety concerns of COVID-19 pandemic. Activists have been calling this news headline one of the biggest signs of fascism so far in Trump's presidency. And the issue has become more and more dire as photos emerge of hundreds of mailboxes being taken away. Some have noted that the mail is being sabotaged specifically in areas with higher demographic, democratic populations. Political advocates from all backgrounds, along with some government officials and celebrities have been working together to raise awareness about how to vote early and how best to get your ballot to count. Information is being spread about where to ask for your ballot, how to ask for your ballot, and when and where you can turn it in so it's likely to be counted in the elections and how to raise more awareness so as many voters as possible are aware of the stakes. One quote said it best, cheating in an election has been so normalized that we are all expected to just work around it. But we also want to know what is it like to be and be a part of the United States Postal Service. This is something that is a regular part of our lives Every one of us uses it. Every one of us gets mail in our mailboxes. We, you know, it's such a normal part of daily life. But what is the life of a postal worker? And especially, what is life like for a Muslim postal worker? Joining us today is Renee Halima, who is a worker for the Postal Service. We'll be dis discussing her experience as a worker with, with her as well as the significance of the Postal Service to the lives of everyday Americans. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Welcome to the show, Halima. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for being here today. I know you've had a very, very long day and I'd really like to learn more about you and then Share with us what a day of a postal service worker looks like. Okay. Where would you like me to start? Well, tell, tell me, where are you from? Um, and how did you, where did you grow up? I want to know more about you. Um, and how did you get in, uh, when was your first job at the U.S. Postal Service? Well, I was born in Prince George's County. I've lived in Charles County basically all my life. Uh, I first started in the Postal Service as a RCR, which is a rural carrier relief in 1983. I was that for three years. And then in 1987, I became a contract carrier with the Postal Service and I've been one ever since. And this year will make going on 40 years not quite but almost 40 years wow 40 years of working day in and day out what time in the morning does your uh work day start and when does it end well my work day starts at 8 a.m but i get there early to get a jump on things and far as when i'm done there's no set time as to when i get off it's just when i'm finished whatever time that may be. Whatever then. So normally, when what time do you finally get home? Usually when I get home, it's dark. So that could be anywhere from seven to nine o'clock. On a rare occasion, I've had the pleasure of getting home before dark, but usually it's anywhere from seven to nine. 
Sounds familiar. And so walk us through the day. What, um, what happens? Um, how does, so you get to the post office and then what happens? Well, we get there, we put our things away, we sign in. First, we have to go to the letter case and pull all our letters. Then we go to something called a flat case, which is the periodicals, magazines, and things like that. We have to pull those. And then over in the corner, they call it the, uh, the den, is where they throw the parcels. Each route has a bin for their parcels. And you have to go get your parcels. You have to sort your parcels. We do have DPS, which is delivery point sequence mail, and it comes in delivery order, but you still case the mail. The mail from the letter case, you have to case it. The flat case, you have to case it. And then there are third class, which is box holders and things of that nature. You have to get your parcels in order. You have to pull the mail down. You have to pack it up. You have to load up your vehicle. And by me being a contractor, I have to use my own personal vehicle. I'm not provided with a mail jeep. So you won't see me in a, you won't see me in, in an LLV. Okay. And how does that, and does that affect your work? Do people then sometimes wonder why your car is in their, in their sidewalk? Have there been experiences? I, please share some of your best experiences while working in the postal service. And then we'll talk about some of the hard times. Uh, well, when I first started, I did get asked why I wasn't in an LOV, then I had to explain to them that I was a contractor and then I have to provide my own vehicle. Basically, I provide everything myself. The postal mm. service just gives me the building to work in. They give me the equipment to work with, but anything, fuel, backup vehicle, relief, replacement, vacation, anything, we have to provide ourselves. Yeah. Yourself. And how many uh, contracting um, per post office? How many times are workers um, contractors? Well, at the particular post office that I work at, there are 18 routes. And out of the 18, about 11 to 12 of them are highway contractors. Mm -hmm. And all the other ones are rural carriers. Mm. And they actually work for the Postal Service. So please do share some of the most significant and life-changing experiences that you have had being a Postal Service worker. Well, I think one of the hardest times that I had, it was about over 10 years ago, is when La Plata had the tornado. Mm -hmm. And half of the town got destroyed. A lot of homes, businesses were in rubble. Mm -hmm. And we had to deliver the very next day. We had to go out mm -hmm. in the community. We had to go to these people homes or where their homes used to stand at and deliver mail. And in a lot of cases, the only thing that was left was the mailbox. Wow. And that, that, that was hard because I felt so bad because we had to, like I said, we had to deliver the mail and the only thing that these people had left was the box. Wow. Some of their houses were completely gone. That must be. So what, seeing you out there in the community, what are the responses that you would have gotten in a disaster like that? Uh, well, the one response that sticks with me the most and like I said it made me feel the worst was like I said we were delivering the mail and we have been taught that if the mail box is obstructed you don't dismount unless mm -hmm. you have something to sign for or there is something that will not fit into the mailbox then you dismount and you take it to the door and like I said mm -hmm. we were just basically delivering mail no reason to dismount and like I said people had tow trucks, uh, vehicles, things that were blocking their box. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one gentleman apologizing to me for having his box blocked because I mm -hmm. couldn't get out to deliver it in. Because it, it just made me feel bad. 
And alhamdulillah, I remember the mosque, which is 100 feet from the post office. I can walk to it. It got damaged, but compared to some of the buildings around it, it wasn't that bad. Even the post mm. office got damaged. And for like a week and a half, we had to work at another location. So we would go to this location. We didn't have any equipment to work with. We did everything by hand, load up our vehicles. Then we would drive to La Plata, deliver the mail, and then go back to this other location until the post office was repaired enough where we could go back inside and work. These are such poignant moments that you are, um, you are talking about and sharing with us. I wanted to know what has it meant for you personally to be part of the Postal Service and how has it become an influential part of your life? What significance does this job hold for you? Well, working for the post office, the way I originally got the job was my sister told me they were hiring. And at that time, she worked for the post office. So I went and applied and alhamdulillah, I got the job. Mm -hmm. I started at one location, went to another location. And where I've been at for all these years is at La Plata Post Office. And at that time, my mom worked there. I worked there. Matter of fact, several of my relatives worked there. And it's like we're all big one family because mm -hmm. in some way, we're all related. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the fondest things that I can remember that the post office, it was sad, but I was very appreciative was the passing of my parents because mm. when my mom died i was with her up until the time she passed okay. and it was like 3 a.m in the morning and i remember waiting until the family members came to say the goodbye before they took her away and i had to go to work right mm -hmm. after that but it, when it was time for her funeral services me my son and my other family members, it was several of us. So that was a lot of routes that they had to cover. The carriers, they all chipped in and they covered us so we could attend the funeral. Because um, technically as a contractor, I'm responsible for my own coverage. If I get sick, I have to find somebody to cover me. If the car breaks down, we have to go get a rental or you have to have a backup vehicle and for a lot of people to have a car on standby is not easy to do mm -hmm. i mean anything that happens somebody is in an accident you got to go take care of thank you so it really is like you all working as a family together and helping each other out um on days that obviously with sickness um or death in the family. So that that's really amazing to know. And is this particular to your post office? Or do you think this is the culture in many post offices around the country? Uh, I will say this is our particular office because there are post offices that are bigger and there mm -hmm. are some that are smaller. And of the bigger post offices that I know of, they don't have contractors. Okay. They have rural carriers, they have city carriers. Hmm. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the dismantling of the Postal Service. How do you think, in your opinion, will this negatively impact and affect families of those who work for it? Why is this, you know, this is a job that so many people work for the post office. How is the dismantling of the postal system going to work? affect you guys? It's going to be a loss of income, for sure. Uh, they're going to, they want us to do the same job in less time. And mm -hmm. it seems like they're implementing more restrictions or more rules that we have to follow. And there were or used to be ways where you could earn extra money because we don't get overtime. I can work 60 hours mm -hmm. or I can work 
three hours by being a contractor, I get paid the same amount. Mm -hmm. Whereas a postal worker over 40 hours, you get overtime. That's something that we aren't privileged to. So one of the things that we can do is like, we can make an extra trip or extra run or extra delivery. There was a time when express had to be delivered by a certain time. If you had to deviate from your route or you had to leave your route for your station, you got mm -hmm. paid mileage. Mm -hmm. And that has not been the case in quite some time. And now that Amazon has started. Mm -hmm. How has that affected? It seems like now there are more parcels than it is mail. We get more parcels than there are letters than there are flats. And it takes longer to deliver a parcel than it does a letter because mm. you have to dismount. You have to walk to the front of the house, the garage, if it's facing the front of the house, wherever you can put the parcel or me personally, I try to put the parcel in a location so that the customer can see it, but nobody can see it from the street. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to drive by, like there was a time when people just basically driving up and down the neighborhood, looking to see parcels on your front step, looking mm -hmm. to see parcels placed wherever, and they would go and take them. So I try to make sure they can see it, but it can't be seen from the street. On the street. And with yeah, and with the equipment that we have, you're able to put, when you scan it, where it's put at, where it's located. So if the customer gets a notification that a parcel has to been delivered, front door, back door, garage, or some other location, they know where to go to look for it. Well, and we I can see it. right now, there are a lot of people who, and a lot of small businesses who are absolutely livid that they aren't able to send out uh, orders there here's a tweet that we're going to show on how upset people are uh, the fact that um, post offices uh, the doors the 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 post boxes are being jammed shut um, so let's take a look at that so what is this you, you know we're, what we're watching is that the post office post boxes have been locked up uh, why is this? Do you know what has been explained to you? Why are these post boxes locked up? Honestly, it hasn't been. Okay. It hasn't been explained to us. And we have two of those in front of the post office where I work at. And on certain routes, they have collection boxes. Mm -hmm. and, and what I've known to be when they get so full that nothing else can get in there, they will get jammed. Or mm -hmm. if a customer goes to deposit something in there, they can manage to get it in there, but it's bigger than normal, it will jam up the box. Mm -hmm. Now, where, where, where I'm at, far as them being blocked, I haven't seen that. And I haven't heard from any of the carriers that they're being blocked. They're being overfilled, but okay. they haven't been locked up. I think that's some in the bigger areas like DC, Baltimore, maybe those areas, but yeah, we're at I, it, a rural. Okay, so in the rural areas, they haven't uh, locked them up. Yes, we did. We have mm -hmm. received several. I've seen several tweets um, or several stories, news stories about people not being able to use their post boxes, um, and some of them actually having locks being put on them. So this is affecting a lot of small businesses who are already suffering under the COVID pandemic. And as you said, a lot of our mail these days are packages um, because people are not shopping um, in stores much these days and they, they do online shopping or they're ordering things online and having it delivered. Um, so this is something that we're, you know, people, it is, it's going to affect not only uh, postal service workers, but also other people, other small businesses. Um, what would, you know, so so from your aspect, no, you have not been given any um, updates about what will actually happen now that the, that the United States um, 
you know, the, the government is not going to be funding the post office. And that's the moves that are being made. Um, so and the, and you might have seen people walking around with signs saying, save the USPS. How does that make you feel? Oh, uh, you're right. I haven't seen it in the area where I'm at. The things that you speak of, I've seen on the news. Mm -hmm. And I wish it would come to where mm -hmm. we're at. Because in Charles County, La Plata, that's like the uh, the hub. You have like the government building, the courthouse, uh, the mayor, the town police, the things of that nature are located in La Plata. Mm -hmm. And the people are upset and understandably so, because like I said they want us to do the same job and it's more, but in the same time amount, they want you to do a 10 hour job in eight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's possible, impossible to do. Uh, I know some businesses have closed. Mm -hmm. I went past, it was there Monday and that Friday they were gone. They have closed. Mm -hmm. Some people, the workers that they have have been reduced. They're not at full capacity. And I've noticed a lot of the businesses where they had inside business, they have brought it to the outside. Mm. And the thing that, like I said, just me personally, when this first started and they started to let the businesses open up and the six feet social distancing, the, the wearing of the mask, I, I didn't see a lot of it. Mm. And, and it, it kind of shocked me. For example, an establishment, they have outside dining. And if you're eating, I can see you not wearing the mask. But if you're just sitting at the table, socializing, talking, I would think you would wear it. If your server, mm. your worker is wearing the mask, then why can't you? Mm. And as far as the six feet distance, it's almost non-existent. And it makes me nervous and it makes me jumpy because when I'm out delivering the mail and... You don't want to seem rude, but to try to get the people to keep six feet back or not to approach you, or if you go to deliver a parcel, let you set the parcel down, back up, and then go get it, that's very hard, if not impossible to do. I can and, imagine. Uh, how else has the job changed in the past few weeks? Um, with you know you've talked about the funding becoming smaller and the mail is getting slower and slower and because you guys don't have the resources or uh, the post offices don't have the same resources that they had before so um have you been affected uh, by you know so obviously and working under pandemic conditions um it, it's been you know what you're describing is particularly tough especially since you're you're in that age category that you're much more in harm's way than perhaps a 19 year old. Um, so I would really um, like to know how has the pandemic affected the way in which you work? Well, of course, we are required to wear a mask. We wear gloves, the sanitizer, and the wipes to spray. And as a contractor, we have to provide all these things ourselves. The mm -hmm. post office doesn't provide it with us or they aren't obligated to. Mm -hmm. When they get it, and in the beginning it was scarce, of course they would share what they have, but mm -hmm. trying to have a, enough for everybody in the post office wasn't easy to do. So we had to provide our own. And in the very beginning, we didn't have masks, we didn't have gloves, we didn't have any of those things. And there was this organization called the Giving Foundation that they were generous enough to provide masks for me and my fellow contractors, and which I shared with them. 
and they gave us gloves, which we still have. But far as like wipes, sanitizer, isn't so bad, or the disinfectant spray. We, we haven't had it and try to buy some for me and the people that I work with, we haven't been able, I haven't been able to do it. Mm. That's, you know, the, and people take all of this for granted. It, it really, like, I would like, what would you like to let everyday citizens know about the importance of the Postal Service and how imperative it is to fund it? Well, I feel like this, if the funding that they is needed to keep them going, if it isn't given today, it may not be there tomorrow. There was mm -hmm. once a time where they were talking about not cutting off Saturday delivery. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the businesses, the customers raised such a uh, dislike to it that that was something mm -hmm. that got, got taken off the table. But I feel with the way things are going, it may get brought back. Mm. And so, yeah, go ahead. With if that day was to lose, losing that day is losing a day of pay, mm. which you will not get back. And by losing a day, everything that would have gotten that day will go on to the next day. Next day. So and let's go process, processing and distributing mail. Most places they have a cutoff time. Mm -hmm. For example, 10 o'clock. So what isn't done at 10 o'clock, it gets added on to the next day. Mm -hmm. And that makes you a little bit behind. Then it gets added on to the next day to you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more behind. And there'll be some days where you will get no mail, one or two pieces. Then there'll be days where you get a handful or so much mail that we have to rubber band it and make it a package. And I think that comes from like that, the cutting back of the overtime, uh, delaying. Some things you have one to three days to deliver. Some things you don't. And by them taking away the much. I shouldn't say taken away, but at least till the election is over with, I've heard that the overtime would not be taken away. The machines that they have not taken out will remain in place. And for the things that they have done, they're gonna try to undo mm -hmm. until the election is over with because mm -hmm. they don't want it to seem as if this was done to cause any conflicts, I must say, in the election. Mm. Now, I, you know, and you said that, and for this, just to let our audience know that um, there will be a hearing in um, in the in the Senate on this, and um, the post office chief, uh, he is supposed to appear in the hearing. And uh, the Postmaster General Louis DeJoy has announced that has announced that he will be uh, appearing. Um, will he'll suspend the controversial changes he instituted in the U.S. Postal Service until after the uh, November elections, um, and also he is uh, he would engage standby resources as of October first to satisfy any unseen demand, because the demand is going to increase. People will be voting by mail, and so the demand for postal services will increase. Um, so it wasn't clear from his statement whether the post office will replace sorting, sorting equipment that has already been taken offline or transferred, but DeJoy emphasized that existing processing and collection equipment will not be affected until the election and the post office will be able to handle the volume of mail expected as many more Americans cast votes by mail this year because of COVID. Um, according to uh, the committee, he uh, he's supposed to testify on Friday before the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs. According to the com committee, 
The hearing will focus on finances and operations of the Postal Service during COVID-19 and upcoming elections. Um, now, in ranking uh, member of this committee, Senator Gary Peters, he's a Democrat from Michigan, he tweeted out Tuesday morning that um, in the upcoming hearing, a writing uh, to DeJoy must answer urgent questions about USPS's postal delivery de uh, delays, which are harming his constituency in Michigan. Um, he also um, tweeted out, as the Senate committee with jurisdiction over the Postal Service, this committee has a responsibility to examine Mr. DeJoy's recent directives and their impacts on all Americans who rely on the Postal Service for prescriptions, essential goods, voting, and other crucial purposes. It is imperative that Mr. DeJoy publicly and comprehensively testify about changes and plan changes taking place at the USPS. Um, and this is really that this point is really important. Um, and I'd love to get your opinion on this. How many times are there prescriptions in the mail that especially elderly folks, especially during a pandemic, are depending on uh, the Postal Service to get life saving medication? Uh, it, well, it, 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 it has it has a lot. I've noticed where somebody would go to the local pharmacy, or that's not the case anymore. Because there's been times myself where I've had my own prescriptions delivered, mm -hmm. and uh, there are veterans or anybody that's in the military where their prescriptions come from Andrews or any kind mm -hmm. of military installation. And yes. oh, my, uh, oh. it, it's hard because, like I said, there there is a cutoff time. Mm -hmm. And if these prescriptions, medications, whatever they may be, come after that cutoff time, they will go out the next day. And what happened if they didn't have any more or they were waiting on it or they needed it that day, but because it arrived at the cutoff time, it will not get delivered until the next day. Mm -hmm. We are not allowed to deliver it till the next day. Till the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there have been cases where, just as an example, there's a local pharmacy. They have a pickup where people can have their uh, prescriptions mailed. And if the prescriptions are not received at the post office by a certain time, like I said, they will not go until the next day. I can be standing right there. There's been times where I have been standing right there. I've seen it. No problem. I can take it. I can deliver it right now. We have to wait till tomorrow. We have to wait till tomorrow. Wow, that must be really hard, especially, you know, being concerned, being aware, that must be really tough on you. I wanted to ask you, and I'm going to go back to DeJoy for uh, after I ask this question. What has been your experience like being a Muslim in the Postal Service? There has been times when it's been hard. Um, there's been times when it has uh, gave me comfort. There's mm -hmm. been times where I've had a rough day or it's been a bad day. And just knowing that the Lord is, like I said, a walking distance, less than five minutes from where I work at, I can go there. Mm -hmm. And I remember when during Ramadan and Ramadan was over with and they had the prayer at the mosque and I did not go, mm -hmm. but I was able to go outside in the parking lot and I could see that far and I could see them praying outside because it was an overflow and they had tents and praying rugs outside and I could see, and I just stood there and watched. And that made me feel better know that I couldn't go and participate. Uh, 
there was a time when we have a different postmaster and we've had several. Mm -hmm. The one that I have the fondest memory of is retired, but with him, I could go to these things. I could go to the mosque. I could go to Juma. I could go to pray. But things have changed to the point where you're, you're like you're on a time clock. Mm -hmm. You have to be done by a certain time. They want you here. They want you there. And they want you to do it as quick as possible. And the little 10 or 15 minutes here or the 10 or 15 minutes there or hour there, I could take that time, go to the mosque, participate in June and go to pray and make up that time. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't affect me. But it's not like that anymore. Mm. Have I discussed it with the administrative official? No, I haven't. But now to go to the mosque and pray, like I said, 15, 20 minutes. I can do that, but to try to make up that time, it would take me a half hour to 45 minutes. Mm. And I'm not saying that I have health issues. Are they life-threatening? I No, alhamdulillah, they're not. But they do affect me to the point where I don't have the speed that I did when I was 20 or 30 years old. And I'm 56 now. I can do the job. It just takes me longer to do the job. Mm -hmm. And try to explain that to people. I can't. Mm -hmm. Because all they know is what has been put out that certain things are guaranteed by a certain time. And you have to do whatever you have to do to get it done by that certain time. And it's not always possible. And I just wish people had a little more more patience and more understanding that I'm doing the job. I'm doing the best of my ability. I cannot do it as fast, like I said, as I did 30 or 20 years ago, but I can mm -hmm. do the job. And some case that doesn't seem to be the case. And to try to explain it to every single customer, like I said, time doesn't permit. Yeah, because you got to get on to the next next customer and that is you know what you're explaining is this is such a it's a such a personal and it's a physical job it's an emotional job um it's it's something that encompasses your entire day it's not like other office jobs where you're just sitting at the desk and getting whatever work done and then you can take a little break and come back to the desk this is you have a territory, you have a certain amount of mail and it has to be delivered if people are depending on you. And yet, do you think postal service workers, um, male people, male men, male women, um, you get the respect that you deserve in the society? Uh, some do, yes. Some, no. No, I, no they don't. And I can, I can understand that there have been customers or locations where they've had bad service mm -hmm. or they've had bad situations or they've had things that have been lost, misdelivered, whatever the case may be. And not every carrier is the same. And you could have had three, four or five carriers and I hate to say it, you got crappy service. Mm -hmm. And when that one good one comes along, it's like they're having to make up for everything that happened before them. Mm. And like I said, that is hard, if not very impossible to do. True. Uh, True. I was on a, another route in a different area and the carrier before me, he was fast. He could get it done. And me, I was slower. I got it done, but I was slower. And it took me almost a year and a half to get them, I guess, to uh, accept the way I delivered. Mm -hmm. Sure, there are shortcuts that you can take. There are things you can do to get a second here, a second there. But in the long run, is it worth it? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. 
as example, it doesn't fit in the box, take it to the door, take it to the garage. I mean, take it to a location. Don't try to cram it into the box. Don't set it at the top of the box. Don't rubber band it to the box. That's not what we're supposed to do. Mm. And 90% of the carriers know better. We're required to only to deviate a half a mile from the main highway and a half a mile back. Mm -hmm. And some carriers are strict, but an extra one tenth of a mile, what harm is that? Mm -hmm. Especially, for example, there's an elderly person that lives back there. They don't drive, they don't get out very often. Like you say, they depend on what you bring them. Mm -hmm. So, what's the harm in going that extra step? You want to do it, but given again the time restrictions that they impose on us sometimes, you can't. There are, so like I said, some customers that are elderly or they live by themselves and they see, they just want to talk. They just want to talk. Just for, no, just for a few minutes. Hi, hello, how you doing? I mean, they haven't seen anybody all day. Sometimes mm -hmm. they haven't seen anybody for days. And you're, and you're the first person to say wow. that. Wow. Wow. And you don't know, you could be their lifeline. You could, you could be their lifeline because seeing you every day is maybe what gets them through to the next day. And I mean, and you don't want to be rude and say, I don't know how to say, I can't talk. I got to mm -hmm. go. I can't stay. I'll sit here and listen. Mm -hmm. And then after I pull off, my mind is scrambling, how am I going to make up the time? And a lot of times, mm -hmm. I can't. I don't. That's beautiful. That is that was me. That is your heart. Yeah, you work with your heart and not just just what your job is. And this is something that and this is exactly why I wanted to talk to someone like you, because a lot of times we hear from experts and and policymakers and, you know, people who are perhaps uh, even fighting for the rights, your rights but they haven't lived the life of uh, a, a postal service worker. They don't know the ins and outs. And until uh, we learn that what your life is like and what uh, doing the service is like day in and day, day out, until then we won't be able to have that sort of respect, um, you know, and real like feeling for, uh, for your service. I wanted to go back to a little bit about the current um, Post, post Office General, um, Dee Joy, he's an ally of President Trump and he's a major Republican donor. And he has come under fire in recent years for a lot of the mail delivery problems that have cropped up all over the country. But as you explained, it is because the resources are smaller, more packages and not enough people to be doing the work. Um, and he had made uh, several major operational changes after taking over the service earlier this summer. Um, and these concerns, um, uh, President Trump also indicated to Fox Business Network um, that he opposed Democrats' proposed boost in funding for the U.S. Postal Service because he wants to make it harder to expand voting by mail. Um, uh, President Trump is said to have said they want $25 billion for the post office. Now they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of those millions and millions of ballots. Now, in the meantime, they're not getting there. But if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting because they're not equipped to have it. So this is something that is, you know, very, very troubling for our uh, democracy. Uh, and I, I understand the joy is, is now going to be, you know, and President Trump later walked back those remarks true, true. He said he's said to have said that his only goal was to ensure the integrity of the election, although there's no evidence that mail ballot systems lead to um, fraud. So pressure has been building since DeJoy took command at the Postal Service for him to answer questions about his uh, announcement to implement an organizational realignment at the agency, reduce overtime for mail carriers, and remove high-speed sorting machines. Um, he referenced his long-term plans for the agency in his statement uh, 
on Tuesday afternoon writing, I came to the Postal Service to make changes to secure uh, success of the organization and its long-term sustainability. So, but there are lots of questions that still uh, remain. Um, many people are uh, really taking a critical look at these changes and want, you know, trying to understand what is good for our postal service. This is something that is uh, a vital need of the community, of, of, of communities around the country. Um, uh, and the delayed mail across the system. And like you heard, uh, my audience, if like you heard from Sister Halima, that it the delayed mail is often not the the uh, the uh, the you know it's not the fault of postal service workers. Um, there are certain rules implemented that they have to at a certain cutoff point. They cannot deliver that day. if it's not delivered that day. They have to go back and um, you know, wait for the next day. And so many of them are working overtime. She gets home at 8.30 at night oftentimes, it's often dark, um, but, you know, and she's been working since eight o'clock in the morning, yet she doesn't get paid overtime. These are some things that just do not make sense. And this, there has to be something done to make things right for, um, U.S. Postal Service workers and uh, to save this institution in our country. Um, so as we wrap up the hour, we have a few minutes left, um, Mr. Talima, we would love to uh, find out from you, if you could tell the government something, what would you say to them? Oh, I say that they should go back and take a second look at the uh, proposed changes that they want to implement. Uh, I guess vital information, we are not always privileged to. We don't have firsthand knowledge. Usually I hear most of what I know from the TV or radio. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, uh, as far as the benefits the overtime, the things that they want to reduce, I don't think they should. I think it would do more harm and good. Yes, it might save money right here and now, but in the long run, I don't think so. I don't think it will. Because you can plan for today, but what about tomorrow? What about next week? What about next month? And with people living paycheck to paycheck, day to day, some aren't even doing that and to not know how to plan for the future. It's, it's sad. And I don't know what they're going to do. I don't even know what I'm going to do. Hmm. And I can't even plan that far ahead. And I just hope that they would do something. I understand that they need in certain areas, they need to do better. What these areas necessarily are, I don't know. But I would say start at the top and work your way down, not start at the bottom and work your way up. Ooh, because there are just too many people that are gonna be fall to the wayside, I believe. That was so powerful what you just say, said, start at the top. That's where the big, um, big money is as well, instead of starting at the bottom. And especially during the pandemic, especially during this time, you know, the fight for the public post office is far from over. Um, in order for postal service workers to continue to carry out their vital work and deliver for the people every day, the USPS in it is an immediate need of funds, um, especially COVID-related financial relief when banks and gigantic airlines and all sorts of uh, huge corporations can get financial relief. It's time for Congress to deliver this relief to the United States Postal Service. 
Um, now, attorney generals from over 14 states have announced a federal lawsuit saying that the Trump administration violated procedures when it, it changes were made by the postmaster general. This is according to NPR. Um, and this Washington state attorney general, Bob Ferguson, said in a statement, for partisan gain, President Trump is attempting to destroy a critical institution that is essential for millions of Americans. Many people rely on social security benefits, prescriptions, and exercising our right to vote. Our coalition will fight to protect the Postal Service and uphold the rule of law in federal court. Um, and then AARP, which is the largest nonpartisan group advocating for Americans uh, 50 and over, also urged the post master general to suspend any changes to mail delivery operations. Um, and this is something really important. Like imagine a group like the AARP uh, getting involved because of the negative effects of what this can do to millions of seniors around the country. Um, and so this is essentially a nonpartisan issue and um, that, you know, there is there is people being affected on this issue throughout the country. If you are concerned about the United States Postal Service, you must take action, get in touch with your Congress people, get in touch with your attorney generals in your states, make sure that your voices are heard. And so postal service workers like Sister Halima, as well as the millions of Americans who use this institution on a daily basis, are not left in a lurch. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are here every day um, on weekdays with a new show. And I really, really urge you to, if you've missed some episodes, to go to our YouTube page, um, uh, Justice for All, and watch uh, previous uh, episodes. You can also watch them on Muslim Network TV's Facebook page. Um, thank you so much for joining us every day. We're usually live at three o'clock, um, but thank you so much for joining us late today. We had to accommodate Sister Salima's schedule because she's been working hard to get your mail in your mailboxes. Salam alaikum. Well,